Belief in oneself is contagious. We are part of something larger. The movie Glass is certainly going to be a very polarizing movie because it's on track to make over $70 million in the opening weekend. But the problem is the critics aren't liking it. And when your movie is going to make that much money to open in weekend, it usually means that the fans are very hyped and feeling the movie. If we go over and take a look at the early critics' predictions, they are really, really dumbfounded by this movie. And in this graphic coming up, you can kind of see some of the reviews that the critics have been saying about the movie. But your favorite critic, me, is going to give you my review of the Glass movie and whether or not you should go see it, what was good, what wasn't, and what is going to be the future of this movie and M. Night Shyamalan. Let's get into it. What's good, YouTube? You back in the building with y'all knowing, I love it, all feeling, I'm seeing all powerful. Just damn all everything, the sexy as hell host, bringing you life game reviews. You know what we do on this channel. We review everything, tech, movies, trailers, everything. We review it to give you life gains. And if you enjoy that content, please subscribe to this channel. Go check out Life Gains Fitness and Life Gains Finances. And we've got a movie to review called Glass. Boy, I'm gonna put on my plus seven glasses of cinema sexy as hell, work on skilling up my craft, giving you a better YouTube experience, something better to look at. Y'all know I love pretty much all the characters in this movie. It stars James McElroy, love him, done the X-Men movies. Samuel L, the Cuss Master Jackson, love him. Bruce Willis, old school, hardcore guy, love him. And Sarah Paulson, some of y'all might not know her, but she's one of the stars of the American Horror Series, and she's done some other good movies. I would have to say one of the most disappointing things I found about this movie was the tie-in between the previous two movies, Unbreakable, which was a classic, Split, which was a good movie. There's really not that much tie-in other than what each individual main character from those movies brought. The film doesn't get as influenced from that. If anything, this film kind of is going to remind you more of comic booky thing in a thriller. Most of the film is spent with all the characters in lockdown in their little insane asylum being interviewed by Sarah Paulson, whose character is Ellie Staple, who um, I love her, but I didn't really like her in this role. And I mean, that's my girl. She played Marsha Clark in the OJ thing. And everybody know I love her. If you follow me, you know I love her. There's even a section early on in the first half of this movie where M. Night Shyamalan himself does a little bit of a cameo and it was good to see him doing that and if you're going through the movie the the first two acts first half of this movie it's pretty good i mean you you open up the movie with some action sequence with some thriller music all the things that get you set up for a good thriller movie but then she turns real bad and falls the hell off the map now let's talk about the stars of the movie james mcelroy stole the show and the dude, is a, the dude is talented. I mean, what else can we say? This guy is very talented. He's gonna get most of your screen time in this movie. James McElroy basically goes from Psycho Sid to being able to have deer eat out of his hand. And they do a lot of story building with this character through emotional contacts, through going through his history from the Split movie. Some of the characters from Split pop up in this movie that give you an emotional tie to McElroy. Bruce Willis, I felt like they could have done a more better job of using his character. They really didn't do that. Samuel L. Jackson, he's got he's gonna get you guys all hyped up thinking that something big is gonna happen. And like I said, the final act of this movie is what's gonna be the most polarizing part of this movie because the ball kind of gets dropped in that regard. The cinematography in this movie is pretty good. You're not gonna be upset about that. Somewhat action scenes are decent. You're not gonna be disappointed about that. The thriller element, you might be slightly disappointed by that, but you're not gonna be disappointed by the acting of the movie. I mean, all these people 
do a great job, but more so what is gonna kill you in true M. Night Shyamalan form. He has movies that do very good, maybe the first act, maybe even the second act, but then it just falls the hell off the earth in the second half of the movie. That's what's gonna disappoint you about that. A lot of people were hyped for this movie, and I'm not gonna tell you not to go see it. I'm, I'm not gonna say that, because the first half of this movie is pretty decent. Um, you, you'll be feeling really good, but the problem, again, is when it gets to like the second half, pretty much the final act, you're gonna be more disappointed than a Cowboy fan in the playoffs. And so having said all that, I will give this movie a 6.0, which means that's borderline, damn, you can wait and stream it when it comes out on your favorite streaming device or DVD. But for those of you that were so hyped, because you remember how good Unbreakable was, you did like Split and the man becoming a monster, and you wanted to see how these characters would merge to fight against each other, to be developed. Go see it, but you have been forewarned. It falls the hell off the map into the Grand Canyon by the final act. And if you've already seen it, please let me know what you think and would you recommend other people going to see it. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video, comment and subscribe. Go get yourself that life game. Let me know if you go see this movie because I wanna know where you think I went wrong. How was your response to this movie? And until the next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.